All right, here we're going to go back and deal with radicals. Uh, our next step is going to be solving quadratic equations. And when we go into that, what my intentions are is to use the quadratic formula quite a bit. <clears throat> and so when you run into the quadratic formula, you have a radical involving it. So we have to understand how to simplify expressions uh, that involve those radicals. So a couple things. One, we're going to need to know some of our divisibility rules. I generally go with these three. If a number's even, I can take a two out of it. Okay. If I have a number that ends in five or, five or zero, I know I can take a five out of it. Now, divisible by three if the sum. Okay, so that's addition. If I add up all my digits, and that's divisible by three. So for instance, if I took a number like two, three, four, five, and I want to know is that divisible by three, what I would do is add up my digits, okay, and get fourteen. And I could go one more step and continue to add those um, digits together until it's a one-digit value. And since 5 is not divisible by 3, okay, 2345 not divisible by 3. Okay. Another thing that may help us as well is if I get a list of perfect squares in my notes, um, in terms of that, what I'm talking about is 1 squared equals 1, 2 squared equals 4, so on and so forth. And I think you should go all the way down to like 20 squared because what happens is you're going to see some of these perfect squares in your work and then just make it easier if you recognize them. Another thing is when we simplify, sometimes if you see those, it's quicker and easier to uh, break down your values. All right, so let's say we're simplifying the square root of 90. Okay, Number one, we want to factor it down. Okay, meaning I need to try and take 90 and break it up. Okay, now, just because I said that the divisibility rules I have is 2, 3, and 5, doesn't mean I can't use other ones. Okay, I do also recognize that when something's divisible by, or ends in 0, I can also divide out of 10. So I can go that way with it. Okay, and as I'm doing this, what I'm going to do is look for pairs. Okay, because they're important when we're simplifying radicals. So since I don't see any pairs, I continue to try and factor it down. Okay. As soon as I see a pair, I'm going to circle them. Okay. Now, 2, that's all the farther I can go. 5, that's all the farther I can go. So what I'm looking for are pairs. Okay. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my radical here. And any pair, okay, whatever it's a pair of, it's a pair of 3's here, that number, that 3 is coming out. Your singles and the ones that are all by themselves, they don't have anybody to go out and play with. They've got to stay inside. So the 2 stays inside, the 5 stays inside. And what we do is we're going to multiply the outside stuff together. And then multiply the inside stuff together. And that's how we're going to simplify those down. Okay, so since it's just a 3 on the outside, we're good. But I'm going to take that 2 times that 5 and I get 10. Now, like I said, if I recognize that 9 is a perfect square, at this point, some people say, hey, square root of 9, that's 3, and take that out at that time, and that's fine. All right, occasionally we're going to get into a situation where we have a negative number inside my radical. Okay, and now what we've got to think about when we're taking the square root of something, we're trying to say what number times itself will give me that number. Okay, for instance, that square root of 9 we just saw earlier. What number times itself gave me 9? 3. Okay, it's impossible to use real numbers to get to negative 48 because we know when we take a number times itself, it's always positive. So this is what leads us to, again, those imaginary numbers. Okay. When I have a negative inside my radical. Now, how we deal with that again is that i. i represents the square root of negative 1. Okay. So what we're going to do is anytime I see a negative, what I'm really doing is this. I'm taking that negative 1 times a, and there is a property that says that I can break that apart. What I tell people is just take the negative out as an I. That's step number one. Okay, Take the negative out okay. 
and it's going to be that I. So my first step here is just take that negative out, okay? But what it is, it's going to be imaginary. And now break down like we did before. All right, but now don't forget your I. So when I go and do my 48, okay, it's even, so I can go with the 2. And another thing I like to do is I don't like to leave them sit there. I like to continue bringing them with, okay, until they get circled. Because if I don't bring it with, a lot of times what happens is I lose them. Okay, and then even at the end, what I'll do once in a while is box up my um, single. So on the outside in this case, I have the I. Don't want to forget about that. You have a 2. You have another 2. On the inside, you have a three. So now when I multiply all my inside stuff together and outside stuff together, I'm left with four I squared to three. Now, this piece here is more what we're going to see when we get into the quadratic formula, if you remember that the opposite would be over plus or minus B squared, square root of B squared minus 4AC. You have the radical and you have a, a number piece out in front of it. So how we're going to go about doing this, number one, simplify my radical. Okay, square root of 16, I recognize that as 4. Okay, and then we're going to simplify this expression. Now, this is a case where I did have a perfect square, meaning there's no radical left anymore. Okay. I'm going to simplify it just like I should. I'm going to take and simplify my numerator. And then, since both of these are divisible by 2, I need to simplify it down, or I'm going to use my calculator. I can simplify it down to 3 fourths. So if we look at another example, simplify your radical. Simplify the square root of 270. And sometimes you need to go to the side to do this. And I'm going to go quicker by using 10. All right. And so what I find out is I only have the one pair here. Okay. <clears throat> so what I have is 6 plus or minus. And I got the 3 that's a pair, so I'm taking it out. And what I'm going to do is all these singles, the 3, the 2, and the 5, I'm going to multiply those together. Okay. And it's still all over 12. So it's not a perfect square this time. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify it as far as possible. Now, what I'm talking about with this last step, okay, if I'm going to divide out a common factor, what I'm saying is I can simplify if I can divide something out of this piece, this piece, and that piece, all three pieces. I can't go into the radical. Okay? I can't just all say, oh, I'm going to take something out of that radical. Only time I can deal with radicals is if it's all under one radical. So what I notice is that every one of these is divisible by 3. So 6 divided by 3. 3 divided by 3 goes to 1. What's under the radical is not going to change. And there's my solution. Now, I can't simplify that because there's a 1 there. It has to come from all three pieces, not just two of them. Okay, so that's one of the common errors that we really got to be careful with. Okay, so same thing. Even if I have a negative inside my radical, I'm going to simplify it the same way. I'm going to take that I out. And then I'm going to break down the 28. So I got 4 plus or minus. I'm able to take out a 2. Don't lose your I. 7's inside. Again, if I'm going to simplify, it has to be taken out of these three parts, which all of them are even. So I can take 4 divided by 2. Basically, it's 2I divided by 2. Again, can't touch my radical, and done. All right, good luck with this.